Well, I am uh, currently an endowed chair at Texas Christian University in finance. I don't want people to be accused of something they did not, in fact, do. And so when I've worked on cases since 1986, whenever somebody's been accused of having done something and, in fact, they haven't, I want to help them in that way. I didn't know Ken Lay. Certainly I had heard of Ken Lay because I knew of people who had been involved with Enron and had various kinds of activities taking place and going on and all that. But I didn't know him personally. I had not met him. I knew that I'd be able to get the facts, see the facts, run through them in detail, and then determine whether or not I should be involved. I got to see exactly what was being claimed uh, by some of the so-called expert witnesses on the plaintiff's side. And specifically, there were accusations being made by the Department of Justice about specific things they said, oh, Ken Lay did the wrong things, the following wrong things. And they were just wrong. They were way off about that directly. It was very clear. My conclusion was that, that he had, in fact, done what was proper. I was called in as an expert witness about finance. The things that I did get to talk uh, about with respect to him is very clear, very clear and straightforward. To be perfectly candid with you, uh, the, the court wasn't allowing all of the things that, that I believe ought to be helped to explain to the, ju to, to the jury. They, they need to understand the details of what it was he was being accused of and why that's not right. And, and I wasn't allowed to do all of the things that I knew ought to be done and would have been correctly done. And it was in part because of the judge, it was in part because of of the claims by the DOJ trying to reduce the amount of things that would be allowed. And so, for example, they would say things like, well, let's see, there were some things that were already addressed previously and so he shouldn't be able to talk about it. Okay, and the fact is that I had an expertise in those topics that others who had talked about them before did not have. And there's a list that I had in my slides that I was able to show, but actually they wouldn't let me show that in the case. And had I been able to do that and to help the, 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 the jury understand better, they would have more and more understood, oh, wow, Ken Lay cannot be guilty. The claims against him were wrong. That is the truth. And they didn't get to know that. The lawyer that, the, from the DOJ, who was then trying to question me about that, I mean, he really kind of, he didn't do anything very serious, and he kind of semi-gave up on, well, okay, you know, and I mean, it, became, it, was, it really became clear from his response about that, that the, that the jury should have truly understood, oh, what they're claiming about him on that particular issue, that's not something we, could, we should say was guilty about. And yet, they found guilt on everything. So they, they just weren't paying detailed attention to those things, it seems. They didn't get it. They didn't follow it at all. Some people were listening, paying attention. You could see by, you know, there were, there were jurors who were looking at me and smiling and stuff like that, but then others really seemed not to be paying attention at all. I don't know if they were listening or not. I don't know. The dean of the business school said, you know, <clears throat> I've received letters from people saying, oh, Dr. Barry was in favor of Ken Lay. That's terrible. He should be fired or something. And, and the dean and also the, 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 uh, the, the chief executive, you know, the head of our whole university said, there's no reason for that. This man is doing what is right. He's doing, it's okay that people take on things that they believe in and do that. It's all right that there's no reason to be accusing them of that. And, and he wrote them back notes about why it was valuable and proper that I did what I did. And, and they, it, I don't know exactly which ones, but he was telling me that by, by and large, they agreed, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right, we shouldn't have made this claim. That's right. You know, it's so important to get the other aspects and details out. And, and it's because the court didn't allow us to specifically address those points, but those are points that I have no trouble at all evaluating in great detail. I did that in great detail all along before that trial ever started to make sure that I could be able to say about any particular thing I would be involved in that it was in fact not proper to be accusing him of that. In other words, I didn't just say, oh here, I want to take all these on and pretend to be 
you know, to think that I'm right about it. But no, I wanted to only take on things that were right. And every single thing they accuse him of was wrong. Every one of them. So it was so vital to recognize that fact and, and have people understand that when these kinds of accusations take place, please, as a jury, recognize that you need to see the facts, think about the facts in detail, don't simply make assumptions at the start. Do what's right.